In this Singscape lesson, we'll create a text logo that looks like it's being reflected in a puddle of water. To start, let's switch to the Squares and Rectangles tool and create a large rectangle for the background. I'll make it black. Now let's switch to the Text tool and click somewhere in the canvas. I'll type the word reflect in uppercase letters. Now let's switch to the Select tool, hold Control and scale this up. Let's put it on top of the background and turn it white for the moment. Then let's open the Fill and Stroke dialog by clicking this button in the Commands bar. I'll give the text a light blue fill. Now let's open the Text and Font dialog by clicking this button, and for the font, I will choose Roboto Heavy. If you want to use this same font, you can easily find it for free online, but most fonts should work with this. Now I'll click Apply and close out this dialog. Next, we want to make sure all of the characters of our text are aligned at the bottom. Let's zoom in some by holding Ctrl and scrolling up the mouse wheel. I can tell that the C here is a little below the other characters because it's the only one touching the bounding box. So I'm going to turn the text object into a path by going to Path, Object to Path. Then I'll ungroup the letters by clicking this button. Now I'm going to open the Align and Distribute dialog with this button. And I'll click this button to align the bottom edges of the paths. OK, now let's turn all of this into a single path by going to Path, Union. And I'll zoom out by holding Ctrl and scrolling down the mouse wheel. And to Pan, we can hold down the mouse wheel and move the mouse. Let's now duplicate this path with Ctrl D, then click this button up here to flip it vertically. Now let's turn off Snapping, then hold Ctrl and move the duplicate down here, leaving a small gap between the paths. Let's give this a linear gradient by switching to the Fill and Stroke dialog and clicking this button. Now let's switch to the Gradient tool over here, then grab this stop on the left and drag it up to the top of the path. Now let's hold Ctrl and drag the other stop to the bottom. I'm going to raise the alpha channel all the way up, and I'll make this a dark purplish color. Now let's double click near the center of the gradient line to add another stop, and I'll make this darker and more saturated. I'll also make it a bit closer to cyan. Alright, now let's switch to the pen tool, and let's use it to create a puddle shape around the bottom text. I'll start up here, then click and drag in some places inside the text. And we don't really want to cut off any of the top part of the text because it will look weird. So let's go around up here and close this off. Let's turn off the stroke by shift clicking the red X down here. And the fill color doesn't really matter, so I'll just make it red. We can also create some paths inside of the puddle to cut out of it. To cut this path out of the puddle, Let's switch to the Select tool and shift-click the puddle, then go to Path, Difference. And I'll switch back to the Pen tool and create a few more of these. Okay, now let's shift-click the text, then let's go to Path, Intersection. OK, to make this look rippled, we can use the Jitter Nodes extension. But in order for it to work properly, we need to add some more nodes to this path. So let's switch to the Node tool, and let's select all of the nodes by pressing Ctrl A. Now let's click this plus button up here four or five times to add a bunch of new nodes. That should be good. Let's switch to the Select tool, then go to Extensions, Modify Path, Jitter Nodes. Now let's go ahead and check Live Preview here. OK, so first, we want to get rid of the vertical ripples. We can do this by setting maximum displacement and Y here to 0. Let's click in the other text box so it will update. 
We can also try some different values for the X displacement. Let's try this shift node handles option. That looks pretty good. We can check out the distribution types here as well. I think Gaussian actually looks the best. Once we have the effect we're looking for, we can click apply and close this out. Let's also stretch out the bottom of this text to make it look like it's getting closer to us. We can do this with a perspective slash envelope path effect. So let's go to path, path effects to open the path effects dialog. Then click this plus button down here. Then click on perspective slash envelope here. Now in here, we want to check this mirror movements and vertical option. Next, let's switch to the node tool. Then let's grab either this bottom left or bottom right handle and drag down and out a bit. And because we have the mirror movements and vertical option checked, it's doing the same on the other side. Let's switch to the select tool so we can see it better. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Let's apply the path effect by going to path, object to path. And we can switch to the gradient tool and adjust the gradient sum if necessary. All right, let's switch to the select tool and select both text paths. And let's group them with control G. Now let's shift click the background, switch to the align and distribute dialog, and center these vertically and horizontally with these buttons. Okay, that should do it. Thank you for watching, and please let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions for future lessons. I'll see you in the next one.